Hello fellow treasure hunters! In this video I want to show you the X-Series detectors by Quest. The X5 and X10. These devices are the perfect choice for beginners, especially if you have no experience in metal detecting at all and don't want to spend a fortune on your first own device. The X5 brings the most important features of a detector. A pinpoint function to precisely locate the objects you found, discrimination settings, a waterproof search coil and fast recovery time. Furthermore, it has a built-in battery for around about 30 hours of usage and, and this is not even common for more expensive detectors, coil lighting. Besides all the features of the X5, the X10 also brings display backlight for searching at dusk or dawn, has more different tones to identify different metals and you have slightly more precise discrimination settings. Also, it has a threshold function and a custom search mode. If these terms are new to you, watch the following explanation of the different settings of the detectors and soon you are ready for your first search with the X5 or X10. But first, let's take a look at the scope of delivery of the X10 and how you can set it up after opening the package. Let's get into it. Here we have all the pieces you will find in the package of the X10. At first, of course, the search coil with a coil cable that will later be connected to the control unit. This is a blade search coil 25 times 13 cm big. Then we have these two pieces that will build the armrest later to stabilize the arm when using the detector. This is a control unit where you hold the detector later and should always keep an eye on because here the target ID of the metal objects is shown. Also, you can choose the search mode and configure the settings. Next is the lower shaft that will later be connected with the search coil. This is the middle shaft piece. On the bottom side, you can already see the holes to adjust the length of the detector later. When children use the X5 or X10, you can leave out this piece so the detector becomes even shorter and a little lighter. At last, of course, the upper shaft, where the armrest and control unit will be attached later. Then we have this little bag with different screws for attaching the search coil and armrest. A strap that can be pulled through the armrest for getting even more hold of the detector at your elbow and the charging cable. Also, there's a manual, a quick start guide and a few stickers. All of these parts will be used to get a functional metal detector. And how that works, I will show you now step by step. All we need to assemble the detector is a Phillips screwdriver. At first, we take the control unit and see these four screws at the handle which we have to remove. Then you can take this part of the handle off and take the upper shaft piece, which you can recognize by these few big holes. But it also has these smaller holes for connecting the other shaft pieces later. This is the closed top side. Now we have to pay attention that the small holes point towards the ground and that we attach the handle the right way, that the display points upwards. We choose the holes that are right for the length of our arm, for most users this may be the lowest or middle two, and put the handle in. We attach the second part and put all of the screws from earlier back in. Now we take the two parts of the armrest. We take the bigger part and put it in this direction on the top side of the shaft. From the other side, we attach the other armrest piece in this direction. 
Now we can decue the armrest by using the screw that is included in the little bag in the package. And already we can see the arm lies comfortable in the armrest. Now we take the surge coil. We need to connect the lower shaft piece with this round piece at the end. On both sides there is a rubber piece put in, which you may have to do. Here you can see the snap button for connecting and adjusting the other shaft piece later. This has to point downwards, where the coil cable has to be on the right side of the shaft, like this. We put the shaft piece inside the middle of the coil and take this plastic piece and put it in the right position from the other side of the coil. Now we take these two pieces, put the screw through the coil and use the other piece to tighten everything. It should not be too tight, you have to be able to change the angle of the coil later, but it should not be so loose that the coil kind of just hangs down there. Now we just have to connect all the shaft pieces to each other. We take the middle shaft, if we need it, and turn it, that the small holes point to the ground. We put the shaft pieces together and now connect the upper shaft piece with the control unit pointing upwards. We slide the shaft pieces into each other until the snap button snaps. Now we just have to connect the coil to the control unit by wrapping the cable around the shaft. It has to be so tight that there's no danger of getting caught somewhere so it gets damaged, but it also should be too tight. We take the cable, put it over the shaft and wrap it around the shaft until we are at the control unit. Here we plug it into the port and tighten the nut. Now the detector is ready and we can take a closer look at the display and settings. On the control unit there are two arrow buttons, a settings button, which is also the power button, a pinpoint button and a ground balancing button. So let's turn the detector on by pressing the power button. Here in the middle the target ID of the current object is displayed, with which you can get an idea what kind of metal you have found. Up here, these little segments represent ranges of 10 target IDs and the segment with the currently detected ID is filled black. Above the display you can see three different areas, which indicate what kind of object you can expect for different target IDs. From 0 to 30 you will often find iron objects. Interesting finds like jewelry or coins will have higher IDs most of the time. With the arrow buttons we can switch through the different search modes. This mode on the right is the custom search mode, which only the X10 has to save your personal settings. The ring symbol shows the jewelry search mode. AM means all metals, so the detector will show every single signal. This coin stands for the coin search mode, for when you're searching for coins specifically. 
You can switch through the different settings by pressing the settings button in the middle. The first setting is the sensitivity, which you can change then by using the arrow buttons. The higher the sensitivity, the deeper the detector searches, but it would also be more prone to interferences. By pressing the settings button again, you get to the discrimination setting. Discrimination means to deactivate certain ID segments so the detector won't signal those objects anymore. For example, for ignoring iron signals, because you often don't want to dig out iron objects. So we can switch through the different segments by using the arrow buttons. These empty shapes on the right side show the currently activated segments. If I for example press the settings button to activate these two segments, now the detector only discriminates, so ignores, target IDs from 1 to 30. The X5's target IDs are split into 5 segments instead of 10. The next option is the threshold function, which we can only find in the all metal search mode and only with the X10. This means that instead of a tone signal when something is detected, you can hear a permanent tone which is interrupted when a metal object is detected. This feature is mostly used by already experienced treasure hunters, to be able to better hear signals of very small objects. With the arrow buttons you can adjust the volume of the background sound. In the last setting you can change the number of different tones the detector makes. Depending on the target ID the tones will change so we can get an idea of what object you found just by hearing a different sound. While the X10 has four different tones, the X5 has only two. On the right side of the control unit there are two buttons. With the lower button you can change the display backlight and coil lighting. You can switch through only display backlight, display backlight and coil lighting and no lighting at all. On the other side of the control unit you can find two volume buttons to change the volume of the signal. Here you can see an indicator how high the volume is at the moment and with this symbol you can see the battery status. The ground balancing button is, as the name suggests, for ground balancing. In the ground there is natural mineralization which may cause the detector to make sounds. To avoid that the detector can analyze the ground and filter out the natural signals. For that we put the coil above a place where there is no metal object nearby. Then we press and hold the ground balancing button and move the coil up and down like this until it makes a beep sound. When we start the search we adjust the sensitivity to the search location. It should be set as high as possible while at the same time there should be no interferences to hear. This way you can search smoothly with the best depth performance. For highly mineralized conditions for example at the saltwater beach, the ground balancing may help to remove the interferences. While searching it is important to hover the coil around 3 cm above and parallel to the ground. By making such a swing movement we can slowly scan the whole ground for objects. The X5 and X10 are so called motion detectors which means that they are only scanning while in movement. When the detector shows an interesting signal, we will try to locate the target as precise as possible. For searching even more precise, we then use the pinpoint function. For that, we move the coil to a place without metal objects nearby and start to hold the pinpoint button. Now we can locate the target by moving the coil in a cross motion above the target and check with the pitch of the sound where exactly the object is buried. The lower the number on the display, the nearer the target is to the middle of the search coil. Then we take our shovel to dig the hole. Depending on the size of the object and the depth, we dig a small or big hole and search for the object. This step can be easier by using a pin pointer like the Quest X pointer for example. With a pin pointer you can locate the object fast and easy. And there it is. When we found the object and put it away, we check the location for other signals and close the hole again. Now you're ready to search with the Quest X5 and X10. If you have any questions, we are happy to help you in the comments below the video. Until then, have fun on the fields and goodbye.